Hi, my name is Matt Kendricks. I am the lead developer for DSIP Router. Uh, so the goal today is really to talk about the phone provisioning service uh, that we're GAing, um, making generally available inside of DSIP Router um, for the 0 0.523 release. So what I'm going to do is actually just uh, set the stage with a couple of slides, and then we're going to jump into a demo of how this actually works. Um, this feature has been around for a, for, for a while, but we're finally considering a GA in, in this particular release. So let's uh, review what is the, what's the value proposition of using DSIP router with Fusion PBX. Um, the, real, the real value proposition here is that um, the beauty of Fusion PBX is that it allows you to have multi-tenancy, and it does that by allowing you to have multiple domains. Um, uh, so you may decide to have multiple Fusion PBX servers, or you may decide to just have have one. You know, it doesn't matter that DCIP router. DCIP router can can handle one or more. But DCIP router, what it does is actually learns uh, which server contains which domains. And what happens is that all you need to do at your user agent is basically specify uh, what domain your particular um, user agent belongs to. And what happens is that um, that request is sent to DSIP router and DSIP router will actually route it uh, to the actual uh, Fusion PBX server. So in this case, you're seeing that extension 999 is part of domain C. DSIP router will route it to uh, the second Fusion PBX server, uh, which has the domain C.com uh, domain. So that's all great. Uh, but one of the main issues is that um, we fixed the issue of domain routing and being able to route requests to Fusion PBX. But um, the, I guess you could say the, the precursor to that is that the user agent needs to actually get registered in most cases. Well, in that case, uh, what was happening is that you, the user agent still needed to know which Fusion PBX server uh, it was on. Uh, so in that case, it actually still needed to understand the IP address and have has to have more understanding of you know which which server contains which domains and all that good stuff in order for it to maintain and grab a a provisioning profile. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose. So what we've done is basically made DSIP router. Um, we've added a provisioning service on the DSIP router. So now the user agent, when you actually configure it, you would actually give it the actual IP address and a URL uh, uh, to DSIP router. And then at that point, DSIP router will actually go off and will go find the instance of Fusion PBX that contains the provisioning uh, profile. So uh, again, we're, what we're trying to do is just we want the user agents not to have to worry about um, these level of details. And in particular, if you're running a hosting business, you don't want to have to deal with each one of your set of customers having to remember or know or come up with some other mechanism for figuring out you know, how to route them to a correct Fusion PBX instance that contains their provisioning profile. So DSIP router is taking on that task for you. All right, now that you understand that, let's jump into a demo of what this, how this actually works. So if we go to our Fusion PBX instance here, you can see that I have a number of, of domains. Uh, and in one of those domains, I actually have a, a phone and uh, and actually, the way I get to it is via HTTPS, provision, and then the MAC address, right? And it's actually pulling it up in the browser. You know, this is just the kind of demo what it would, how this actually works. But in but uh, in reality, this would be something that your your phone. This would be the URL that your phone would typically use to be able to provision a particular phone. A, yeah, a particular yeah, the order to provision the phone. Uh, so. What we're going to do now is show how we can actually put a DSIP router in front of that. So the first thing we need to do is actually log into DSIP router. 
and then we're actually going to go over the PBX and endpoints, and we're going to add TM1 as a PBX. We're going to enable Fusion PBX domain support. Uh, and we also are going to specify that the the Fusion PBX uh, database is also on the server, which is the default behavior. Um, you, so in some of my other videos, you may have saw this, but as a refresher, you'll take you'll copy this code here and actually run this on the actual uh, Fusion PBX server. This this allows uh, this will allow DSET router to be able to connect to it and grab the actual domain information. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click Add. So uh, what you can see here is that now um, you know you have the uh, you have two PBX instances. One represents the internal interface of uh, of that Fusion PBX instance, and the second one uh, represents the external interface, right, sitting on 5080. I'm just going to do a reload here, and uh, we're going to go over and wait a couple of seconds. And what's going to happen is that the actual domains uh, should show up here. So we'll give it a couple of seconds. It actually runs uh, every uh, every minute by default. You can actually change that if you want. Okay, great. So now we actually have the domains. Uh, it came through, so you can see these actually represents the same domains that I had on my on my uh, as I showed you on Fusion PBX. Uh, so now I'm going to go over to where I was I was grabbing the provisioning profile here, and I'm actually going to open up another window. Now I can just take the IP replace the IP address here with the IP address of my DCIP router instance. Okay, great. And and what you'll notice here is that it it actually brings up the actual uh, same config provisioning profile that we had before. So once again, you're seeing um, just to kind of prove this out, you're, you're seeing that DSIP router would be the mechanism that the phones would actually have in this configuration to grab this to grab this provisioning profile. So uh, again, to recap, the the main reason why we're doing this is that we want to make it much easier for people who are actually uh, doing PBX hosting, and in particular Fusion PBX hosting. Um, we're trying to get it so that they can actually um, deal with these type of problems in a much more easier and elegant way.